out what devs crave. Reproducibility. Nix is a really great tool. One of the things that I use it for is cross-compilation. So that means that I can cross-compile a ARM64 binary from an x86 machine, or I can do the same thing for RISC V or PowerPC or some other exotic architecture. So today I'm going to show you how you can do the same thing for any package and Nix packages. So I'm going to use Hello World as an example. I'm going to cross-compile it for ARM64, and then we're going to ship the results off to my Android phone where you can see it running. Then I'm going to do the exact same thing for RISC V, and I'm going to set up binary format registration and QMU user emulation. And what that means is that I will be able to run and test the RISC V binary, even though I'm on an x86 machine. Now, that might sound incredibly complicated and detailed, but NixOS makes it incredibly easy uh, to produce that kind of a setup. So I'm going to show you that today. In order to follow along, you'll have to check out and clone the Nix package repository. If you don't have that, you can get it. We're running git clone on this URL here like this. After you've got that, you'll have to also make sure that you're running the latest version of Nix, which at this time is 2.4 because we're going to be using an experimental feature, which makes things a lot easier. It's been around for a long time now, called Flakes. So just as a basic how-to, you just have to put experimental features equals Nix command Flakes into your Nix configuration in whatever way you'd like to. You're also going to make sure that you've got Git installed. I don't actually have Git installed. And now I do. In order to start compiling, cross-compiling with Nix and Nix packages, all you really have to do is run nick build dot hashtag pkgs cross. And now inside of this attribute, which is called packages cross, is every possible cross-compilation opportunity you can have in Nix packages. So this is an attribute set that contains every cross system that is possible. So if I hit tab, it's going to show me all of the possible cross-platform, uh, cross-compilation possibilities we can have. I'm going to choose ARM multi-platform. Now inside of here, we get every possible package in Nix packages. As you can see, I tried the tab complete it, and it shows me 14,846 possibilities because that's how many packages there are in Nix and Nix packages. I'm gonna choose hello and hit enter. Now, one thing to note is that that's going to instantaneously complete. That's because I ran this test before. The result is the binary that I'm looking for. This is all happening on my laptop, right? So I'm gonna run rebuild and it'll show me everything. I'm going to put capital L so that a lot of logs will run down the screen so you can see everything that's happening. So the first thing that it's doing is it's making sure that the, uh, it's making sure that the, the cross compilation environment is set up. And then it's going to run GCC against Hello World with all of the cross compilation parameters set. And the result is going to be a ARM64 binary that is dynamically linked. So we run file on the result. You can see that it is a ARM64 binary that is dynamically linked. But what if we don't want to dynamically link it so that we can get it over to my Android phone and then run it there? The nix build command for that looks pretty similar. All we have to do is say, okay, we want to cross compile for ARM64. And we also want it to be static. And now it's going to cross compile a static Hello World binary. Again, I did that earlier, so uh, no logs show up because it's cached in the Nick store on my laptop. So I'm going to rebuild it. So the result was cached on my laptop, but the rest of the artifacts were not. So for example, right now it's, uh, it's gathering the tool chain, it's downloading all of the tool chain components necessary, like this uh, ARM64 GCC debugger here. So 
So that's 140 megabytes compressed, 700 uncompressed on the left. And the result of this will be a cross-compiled, statically compiled Hello World that I can copy to my Android phone and then run. So we run file on this. We've got a statically linked, debuggable Hello World binary that we can now run on Android. So now that we've got our statically linked Hello World binary, I'm going to get it across to my phone and then I'm going to try and run it. I'm going to do that using a cool tool called Nix on Droid, which lets me run Nix commands on my phone. I'm going to get a tool called Magic Wormhole on my phone. And I'm also going to do the same thing on my laptop. This way, I can send the file across. And then on my phone, do the receive command. And the result of this should run. Going to make sure to acquire the wake lock, otherwise Android will prevent the app from working properly. And the hello binary is right there. I don't know if it's executable. Let's try and execute it. Doesn't seem to be. So we'll set chmod plus x on it. And then we'll run it. And would you look at that? It works. Now it's time to do the same thing, but with RISC-5. In order to cross-compile the RISC-5 binary, I'm going to do it on my powerful beefy Ryzen server. I'm going to check out the master on Nix packages, and then I'm going to build it the same way I did with packages cross. RISC-5-64. Hello. I'm going to put a uh, good logging on it so that you can all see what's happening. So it's going to download the entire tool chain. It's going to every necessary compiler, along with all of the necessary configuration options supplied to that compiler. And it's going to run it against the Hello World source code. And we're done. So in the result bin, same as last time, we can run file. And we'll see that it is a dynamically linked RISC-V binary version of Hello World. Now, how do I run this? Because if I just do results slash bin slash hello, I'm going to get an exec format error because my host is x86 and there's no way I could possibly run this. However, since I'm using Nixos, things get a bit easier. So this machine is called Swordfish and I have a Nixos configuration for Swordfish in the following directory. Inside of it, I'm going to edit it. And I'm going to create some binary format emulated system registrations, which just takes a list of architectures. And that should be all that's required to end up running this binary after a rebuild switch, of course. So interestingly, in order to do that, it's building QMU 6.0 in order to uh, accomplish that. From source, of course, it's it's actually building QMU from source. So let me cancel that. Let's see if I can put dash L on it in order to give you higher log. So it just unpacked the QMU source code and is now compiling the QMU source code. Yeah, I see why it's done it now. It's done that because in order to do this and have this whole integration work, you have to compile QMU with this flag, which is the reason it has had to recompile it rather than using the cache from cache.nixos.org. Now we're back. So as part of my rebuild switch, it did a bunch of things. The main thing is that I should now, after I reboot and restart the kernel, be able to run that RISC-V binary. So just for proof. If 
I can't run that binary yet. But after I reboot, I will be able to run that binary. Now that the machine's back, I'm going to SSH into it. Get back into the written Nick packages where my result is. And now I should be able to run it. Boom. Despite the fact that that is a RIS5 binary, I can now run it using QMU transparently. It'd be really great if you could leave a comment or subscribe or like, or maybe let me know what I didn't explain so well in this video. If you'd like a more in-depth approach and uh, explanation of how cross-compilation works in Nix packages, you should check out Matthew Bauer's blog here, which taught me everything that I needed to know about cross-compilation. So maybe it can help you too.